So, the longer awaited ZBrush 2023 is now here, and the folks at Maxon have just announced their very first iteration after the purchase. Every other thing that we've seen before the purchase has been updates coming for pre existing ZBrush, which is not considered as legacy ZBrush. And in the same vein, this also means that every license that you've had for ZBrush up until this point of ZBrush 2023 is considered as legacy. Typically, anything that has to do with Pixie Logic is now considered as legacy. And before we talk about licenses, subscription, money, and all that stuff, let's talk about the cool features that are now available in ZBrush 2023. It is worth mentioning that most of the features that we're going to see now are features that were present in the ZBrush Summit of 2022. And with that said, let's get right into it. This by far seems to be the most fun and interesting feature for ZBrush 2023. Slime Bridge is a fun and nice organic bridge feature that works in relation to one or two maxed parts within a geometry. This interesting feature will be good for making vein looking organic meshes. Additionally, there are a set of settings that you can work with to get your desired result. And these include the capillaries, tension, bridges and branches. So depending on what you're going for, you can use this to create those cylindrical slime looking meshes on your model. Something that is also pretty interesting with this is depending on the polygons that you're working with, this finds a way of evening things out. And to each of the new bridge that is being created, they generate a brand new polygroup which makes it super easy for artists to isolate these and work on them however they want. Currently, this does not inherit colors or textures from the parent mesh as artists would have to go in and texture distance by themselves. So if you've been thinking about creating some slimy looking stuff, then the slime bridge for ZBrush 2023 is pretty interesting. Redshift integration in ZBrush has now resulted to a better render quality in ZBrush as ZBrush no longer supports the use of Keyshot Bridge. Currently, Redshift now supports all functions that users would typically look for in a render engine. Redshift materials are now included in ZBrush with parameters being available via the default materials section. In addition, subsurface scattering, metallic, shadow catching, emission, depth of field, HDRI rendering, refraction, post-processing with BPR filters and so forth can now be achieved in ZBrush all thanks to Redshift. ZBrush 2023 also comes with additional features which will be considered as honorable mentions. One of them is Sculptris Pro. In Sculptris Pro, the software's dynamic tessellation system now gets a new subdivide slider for selectively altering the density of parts of a mesh. At the same time, ZeroMesher now has a new caching system that now preserves the vertex color data from polypaint, making it easier for artists to start painting earlier on when sculpting. Additionally, there's a brand new retry button that allows users to repeat a remeshing operation on the main model with different remeshing settings. This is great for achieving various remeshing results without the need for undoing or redoing at several instances for different results. There's also the mask region that comes with options for auto region, fill region, and analyze region. The auto region is a clever technique for artists to automatically mask bordered regions of a mesh, and the fill region only gets active after the analyze region has been done. If you have intersecting border mask, what you could do is select one, analyze, and use the fill region to fill a certain mask. ZBrush automatically detects and fill contiguous portions between this mask, and this is a wonderful way to work. In ZBrush 2023, local symmetry is now available within the ZBrush workspace, including when objects change their position with Stager. This provides a new way to control where symmetrical edits can be made on a model, and this is a nice clean quality of life feature that has been added to ZBrush. And finally, there is the apply last action to subtool. This is definitely cool for repetitive tasks, so in case you're trying to repeat a particular pattern or a particular action, then you can use the apply last action to subtool and you can apply this across different subtools that exist within your ZBrush subtool panel. This is also applicable to folders, so just in case the user chooses a specific subtool in a folder and assign a matcap, they can easily apply this to the rest of the folders by simply doing this within the folder settings. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room. If you go over to the blog post, there's a couple of things that perpetual license users need to know. If you're thinking about switching to ZBrush 2023 as a perpetual license user from ZBrush 2022, for you to upgrade, you need to shell out about $659, and this doesn't even come with Redshift, not even a demo version of Redshift. You're only going to be getting ZBrush and a Redshift bridge. For you to get Redshift, that is extra money which you have to pay to get that. Although later on in the video, there's a little bit of discrepancy between the price points which we found out and we're going to talk about that as well. The other options that you have to purchase ZBrush right now is getting them based off subscription. One of them is if you choose to get the subscription and you choose to purchase ZBrush subscription for 2023, you'll be getting 25% off and the 25% off that you'll be getting once you renew it 
the next year because this is an annual subscription then you have to pay full price meanwhile if you're purchasing this one which is going to give you 25 percent this is also going to come with the redshift bridge and redshift cpu rendering it doesn't come with the gpu you want the gpu you pay more money you get the gpu and that is what it is now if you now want to get the cpu and the gpu and zbrush you have to purchase the maximum one subscription for about the same price as the perpetual upgrade which is approximately 45% off for the first year. And of course, in subsequent years to come, you would have to renew this at regular price. Now, this is what is written on paper. If you go over to the plan and pricing, things are a little bit interesting there. So right here within the plans and pricing, you would see that ZBrush is sold at 29.91 per month and you'll be billed 360 per year. So if you click on buy now, you can see that what you will be paying is about 300 and 59 although what was mentioned on the blog is you're getting 25 percent off but here it looks like you're getting even way more than that so for this price if you're doing this by subscription i think it is cool it makes sense to do that if you would like to get a perpetual version of course you can so if you go over to the perpetual pricing section you will see that you have zbrush for 895 go to the buy now and you would notice that you'll be paying about 800 plus in conclusion, the decision is all up to you. It depends on what you want. If you're thinking about getting to ZBrush from ZBrush Core Mini, maybe you can start off with a subscription. That looks like a very good place to start off because you're not spending as much like we've just seen. You're not spending as much as it was written on the blog post to get started with that. On the other hand, if you do have ZBrush 2022, my humble suggestion is keep using that, except you really, 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 really want to work with the slime bridge and potentially that is going to help you. But if you discount that, it's something you can literally do without. And if you're thinking about, okay, I would like to get those redshift thingy and work with that, you can simply use Blender. It's free, it has a GPU, it has the CPU rendering capabilities, it has a lot of cool features, and that might just be the way to go and save yourself some money. So this is more like it. Tell me what you guys think about this in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you like something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And I'd like to see you guys in the next one. Peace.